Have Zeiss had a stroke of genius? Or have they just had a stroke? So, Zeiss. World-renowned optics company makes some of the best lenses currently on the market. And the other day at Photokina, they announced their very first ever camera. Now, it was rumoured for quite a while that they were going to be bringing out a camera and that it was going to be a similar sort of style to the Sony RX1R, which is essentially, it's like a mirrorless camera, but without the interchangeable lens. They just have a single fixed prime lens built into them. So in the case of the Zeiss, it's a 35mm f2 lens. Now, for me personally, I would never buy a camera like that because I like shooting at many different focal lengths. But if you are a photographer who primarily shoots at 35mm, if 35mm is your bread and butter focal length, then having a camera with the lens already incorporated into it does have some benefits because it means that the lens can be designed for peak optical performance with that particular camera body. It's all integrated into the one system. But obviously that sort of camera with a fixed focal length has already been done before, that's nothing new. There's two areas about this Zeiss camera though that really are quite unusual and I don't think we've seen before. And they're kind of making me question, are they game changers or are they just gimmicks? The first is built-in Adobe Lightroom. Yes, you heard me right. This camera has Adobe Lightroom CC built into the camera. So this will allow you to edit your raw files in the camera. And for me personally, it's a gimmick. I can half see a potential in it, sort of, but really it just seems like a complete waste of time. I mean, me personally, I can count on one hand the number of times that I've ever taken a picture, felt the need to share it straight to social media, copy it from the camera to my phone, and then upload it. Now, when you copy an image from the camera to your phone, it normally only sends you a JPEG, not the original RAW file. Now, for me personally, I I've never found that an issue. I know I'm sharing it to social media. The resolution's getting shrunk. It's going to be compressed down anyway, so... You know, I can see there's probably potential for some people who do share quite a lot to social media that they do want to have that facility. But it's not like it saves any more time because from what I can tell, you can edit the picture in the camera, but you can't upload it anywhere directly from the camera. So rather than take the picture on the camera, copy it to your phone, edit it on your phone and then upload it, you're gonna edit it in the camera, then send it to your phone to then upload. So, so it's changing the order of events, but it's not reducing the time. Lightroom these days, you can get on phones and tablets anyway. So if you get away a copy in the raw file from the camera to your phone, you've basically got the same thing anyway. So I think putting Lightroom on the camera is kind of a gimmick. But the one area of the camera that does interest me is with their memory storage system. Because, you know, the last couple of camera releases have gone under quite a bit of scrutiny from people about the number of card slots. Does it have two slots? Does it only have one slot? And Zeiss have put no slots in this camera. What they've done instead is fit the camera internally with a 512 gigabyte solid state memory drive. Zeiss claim this will give you enough storage capacity for over 60,000 raw files or over 20 hours worth of video footage. It then also has the function to be able to transfer those images to a cloud-based service, essentially acting as a backup. Now, funnily enough, a couple of days before Photokina, I was actually sat having coffee with a friend of mine who's also a photographer, and we were having this whole discussion about one card slot versus two card slots. Do you really need two or not? And we both kind of agreed that for the most part, one card slot is probably fine, but having that ability to back up definitely is a needs must in some scenarios. And then I said that kind of long term thinking a couple of years down the line, we would probably see a move towards cameras having internal storage as well as memory cards, similar to the way that phones ran. Because phones years ago, the only thing they really needed to store was a small amount of information regarding you know, your contacts, your text messages, all of that was stored in a matter of kilobytes. Then as phones started to grow, being able to have music files on your phone, being able to take pictures, being able to watch videos, 
the need for storage grew and grew. Now, the easiest way to do that was just with expandable storage, like in most cases was a micro SD card slot. So the phone would have a small amount of internal memory to deal with what it needed to run. And then if you wanted extra storage, you just bought a memory card, put it in the phone, and then you could put anything else you wanted to onto the card. Then as smartphones progressed, they all started to move into larger volumes of internal storage. Some still have the ability to expand that storage, but for the most part, everybody relies on the big internal storage. Now, this serves two purposes, really. The first is on behalf of the phone manufacturer. It means that they can offer you different phone models with different sizes of internal memory storage so they can charge you more money for the phone. The second benefit, though, is that having the memory incorporated into the phone allows for faster transfer rates of data because when you transfer stuff onto a memory card it's going to an external device it's going through a serial bus and all of that creates a slowdown in speed it creates a bottleneck that means that the camera is actually capable of working faster than the card will allow it to do hence why most cameras have a buffer that gives you a little bit of freedom essentially to be able to shoot faster than what the memory card can write to for a short period of time. So it makes sense that a move to internal storage in cameras is going to basically become the mainstream at some point. But I think this whole thing of cloud-based backup really isn't the wisest idea for a couple of reasons. One, data flow and two, battery life. Now in terms of data flow, I don't see the camera itself having internet access. I can see it being like most other cameras where you tether it to your phone and you use your phone's data to be able to transfer information. Well, if that's the case, I mean, my phone currently, I have a, a 12 gigabytes of data on a contract. I spent two days in Germany and I shot 40 gigs worth of information. So, you know, in a normal month, photographers could be shooting hundreds of gigs worth of information. All of that is going to need to be backed up. So you're going to have to have expensive phone contracts with enough data to not only get through your normal day, but also transfer all of this information. Then all of the cloud storage to go with it, which could end up costing you even more money. And then in terms of battery life, the biggest drain really on battery life in electronics is wireless transmission. Hence, if you think about your phone, your phone is constantly transmitting. And we all know modern smartphones are absolutely crap in battery life. But you switch your phone into flight mode, even still using the screen, the battery lasts so much longer when it's not having to transmit data. So I think entirely cloud-based backup storage is going to mean, you know, more data transfer, which is going to mean more battery drain as well, both on your camera and on your phone. Not to mention what happens if you're shooting in an environment that doesn't have a phone signal. You know, if you're out backpacking in the wilderness and you don't have internet access, essentially you can't back anything up. So I think this move to internal storage is the first step on a road to where technology is going to be going, but I hope it's done a little bit differently. I hope that they kind of go with an internal storage unit to save straight to, and then just have one memory card that will allow you to either act as expansion should you require it, or Every time a picture is saved to the hard drive, it then gets backed up into the memory card. Provided they incorporate a fast enough drive into the circuitry, presumably that's going to replace the buffer. You know, sports cameras at the minute, okay, using, you know, XQD, CFast, UHS-2 SD card slots, they can get, sh you know, hundreds of shots off at a time. But in theory, if you put a fast enough hard drive into the camera, you know, that would basically become your buffer and you would essentially have unlimited number of shots or it's going to allow for even faster shooting speeds than the 20 frames a second we're seeing from some cameras now. But what do you guys think? Where do you think the technology is going to be going in the future? What would you like to see incorporated in future cameras? And what do you guys make of the Zeiss ZX1 as well? Do you think that Lightroom is a gimmick or can you see some practical use for it? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.